Hi guys, this video uh, kicks off a new series on uh, databases uh, with uh, Microsoft Access. Uh, we're going to start from scratch and develop ourselves to a high level of proficiency where uh, we are able to develop complex databases with, a with Access. Uh, I'm going to try to do one video per week. Uh, this is going to be a long series as uh, there's a lot of material I'd like to discuss and uh, throughout this series we shall see where Access is best suited and where maybe one should use another application like Excel or maybe a completely other database uh, application. Um, so basically at the end of the series my objective is that we are all at the end of the series we're all able to decide when to use access and when not and how to use access effectively so uh, let's get started so basically what what is what is access well access is a database application I'm just going to database application that means it's a kind of application with which you develop uh, databases and actually uh, the real name for it is called DBMS which means database management system and um, that's the official name of, 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 of applications such as Access and um, basically uh, where Access fits so where Access fits is basically if we have here DBMS basically multiple oops we have here like DBMS and Access is like one of them and Access is pretty much at the lower end of uh, database applications it is suited for small to medium sized databases so basically databases for a small company or for a certain project Access is very well suited uh, another, another database application similar to Access and similar in terms of market uh, is is a is a FileMaker or FileMaker Pro used to belong to Apple, but Apple spun out that as a separate company. It, I, I I think the company FileMaker still belongs to Apple, but it's a separate company now. Uh, also a very good program, FileMaker. So these these two are basically lower to mid range um, databases. You have some other mid range databases, mid range to small large databases, if you wish, which is one of them is my my SQL. MySQL is basically used for um, uh, predominantly right now for uh, web servers and uh, another one is uh, um, Postgres or Postgres, Postgres SQL that these two are sort of mid mid uh, mid market to large so small large market and then you've got the very large databases uh, one of them is the Oracle I don't, I'm not so sure, but I think uh, S SAP is, would be a second sort of um, uh, type of large enterprise databases. And um, basically, Access is basically the lower end, and FireMaker as well. Right. Uh, Access itself is part of the Office package. It's part of the Microsoft Office package. Obviously, there are various versions of Office. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's part of the uh, Office Pro or professional version because I know the, the normal, the standard Office uh, package uh, just includes uh, uh, Word, Excel, and uh, PowerPoint uh, and, uh, and uh, some other uh, smaller programs. But uh, X is not part of that. And X is part of, uh, I mean, it used to be called Microsoft Office Professional. I don't know, maybe it has a different name right now. I don't, I'm not so sure. And um, basically, um, what we're discussing in this series is basically access, but uh, 
the the part the components in Axis and the the way Axis works is not only applicable for Axis but could be a, is also applicable for FileMaker for MySQL and so on. So basically, if you understand Axis, you know you don't only understand Axis but you also understand how database in general function. It's pretty much like engines. If you know how 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 a lawnmower engine works. You, well, you know how you you would you have a pretty good understanding of how a car engine works or how a truck engine works. You know, it's, it's pretty similar. Principally, they're all similar, just as one bigger than the other. You know, and the same thing here with databases. So now we come to the next question: What is a database? And a database is uh, a structured data container. That's that's what a database is. Structured means that uh, it has tables because tables structure your data. So basically, for example, let's say I've got a lot of receipts in some box. That's not a database because that's not structured. Here we have a database and you see the data structure. You have columns and you have rows. Each column is called a field because a field contains a specific type of information. For instance, here are all the first names, here are all the surnames, here are the companies, and so on. So each column is basically, or field, is basically a specific type of information, a specific type of, type of data. Uh, each row is called a record, and a record describes a, 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 an independent entity. So basically this whole row here or record is basically an independent entity. It is basically Ralph Smith with his company, with his position and his phone number. And the next record does not does has nothing to do with Ralph Smith. It's a totally different entity which is Bruno Gray and his company and so on. So um, There's also no need to have a, a, every every uh, field in a record filled up. Let's say I just know this guy's called Ralph. Ralph something. I don't know. That's also okay. It's still a it's still a record. It might be incomplete in some instances, but it's still okay. You don't. Sometimes you have records where you can't fill every 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 field. You know, some sometimes stuff is not applicable to that entity or to that person or to that record, and sometimes you don't know. So you leave it empty, okay? Right. Uh, so a typical typical databases have thousands of records, and in our examples here, we, we're going to use we, we're using a relatively very low number of records just to show something. Because, uh, but tip, you always remember that a typical database has thousands, if not ten thousands, of records. So. Uh, you know, no database is just like that with six records. So a typical database has multiple tables. It has thousands or ten thousands of records. It has many, many fields, maybe even hundreds of fields. And you, so you can imagine the kind of dimensions we're talking about. And here we're still talking about small databases. We're not talking about enterprise data. We're talking about small databases. And now if we start with Access, Access has multiple components. And uh, let's start with the first component. Uh, I'm just going to go back to my uh, sketch. So basically the first component are the tables. That is the foundation of Access and of every, or let's say most of the other databases. All or most databases have tables at their core. And if we compare a database to a human body, the tables would be something like the bones. They provide the structure of everything. And in Access, as well as in, in most other databases, tables exclusively hold or store all the data. So basically all your data is in the tables. If you remove the tables from any database, you practically have nothing. 
no data. Okay, so that's a very important and key point to remember that all your data in Access is basically and exclusively stored in tables. Right, and none of the other objects that I'm going to describe now hold or store any data. They're just uh, sort of a templates or filters. They act as templates or filters, but to that data, they, they all of all of those subsequent components I'm going to talk about now, they all draw their data from the tables. Right now, this and here's a, here's a typical example of a table. This is now a table. Here we have in Access, you have here tables, and our first table is context, and we are now in context, and there we see the fields and the records, and that's and seeing that table, seeing here we under tables we only have this table context and we have only those fields and those records so now we basically got we basically know exactly what this database entails it just entails this one table with those fields and those records and everything else down here uses the data in that table none of those items here store any data that's very important to remember right now let's go to the next uh, uh, component or uh, of, of access and that is queries so queries are basically if we go back to our sketch here queries are basically sort of a layer on top oops sorry they're basically let me just rectify that so queries are basically a layer on top of the tables, queries. And like I said, queries draw their data from the tables. Queries themselves do not store any data. And you can, um, uh, you know, compare queries to like the muscle in our body. So the tables are the bones, the queries are the muscle. And uh, Going back to, to, to our access example, uh, a typical query would be like this. Now here's the table with all those records. Now let's take a query. First query has first name, surname. So if I just double click on that and open it, there's the query. You see, a query just shows certain or specific types of data. In this case, here we have all data in the table. And here in the query, you only have certain data. For instance, in this case, just the first name and the surname. And that's the whole point of databases. When you've got a database, you never, ever want to see all the records all the time. Sometimes you want to see, oh, who didn't pay his invoices the last two weeks? So that would be one query. Next time you would want to see which customers did not order with us in December. So that's another query. A third query would be which people have subscribed to our newsletter so that's another a third query and so on so you see a query basically is a part of your of the whole and those queries basically do two things they they filter and sort the data you got that's what query does it filters i'm just going to write it down here a query A query does uh, uh, the following. It sorts your data, it filters, and it calculates. Those are the three things you do in access queries. Because in a table, you don't care about the sorting, you don't care about the filters, and you don't care about the calculations. In the tables, you just input data. And in the queries, you do all that stuff like sorting, filtering. Filtering means like, let's say, uh, just show me the guys earning more than 10,000. Just show me the guys who bought more than three books and so on. That's a filter. And you calculate. For instance, a typical calculation in a database, when you are uh, recording uh, people, customers in your database, you record their date of birth, not their age, because age changes continuously. So you record their date of birth and you have then a query which basically calculates their age depending 
on when you need to know it. Let's say if you if if somebody's born in 1950, in 2015 he's like uh, 65 years old. In 2016 he's like, he's gonna be 66, and so on. So th th these kind of calculations are all carried out in queries. So queries basically use those records from the tables and then do the following stuff on them, sorting, filtering, and calculations. So that's why I compare them like, it's, they're like the muscles. They add dynamics to the whole database. And here, let's, let's look, at, look at this query, for instance, it's called inks. This query just shows the inks, basically those companies which are an incorporation. You know, not all companies are shown here, but basically only those companies which are an ink. Okay, here in this query, for instance, VPs, you only saw you see the people who are VP of something. Yeah, because here in context we have multiple people. Some of them are CEOs. One is one guy is a CTO, marketing director, and so on. But here, this query just shows me the VPs. Right, so you can see here the point uh, behind queries. So now we come to our third component in Access, and those are forms. What are forms? Basically, a form is a template which shows the data in, uh, uh, from tables and queries. It shows them in a better light. Basically, forms make uh, a database user-friendly. So let's go back to our database example. So basically, here's the query VPs. Now here, under forms, I have also a form called VP, which is based on the query VPs. And if I open it up, you can see it looks much better than the normal query. And added to that, I haven't done any, any, any styling or so on, but like in a query itself here, I, I cannot do a lot of styling. And furthermore, I cannot add any buttons or any stuff like that. Whereas in the form, I can do all that. I can do a lot of formatting, add colors, and more importantly, add buttons to help people navigate through my database. And that uh, thing with forms brings me to an important thing about Access, and that is, you know, in, uh, in, most, in most applications, let's say Excel or Word, you have one guy building something in Word or in, uh, in, in, in Excel. And, you know, 99% of the time, it's this guy using what, what he built. So basically, a guy building an Excel table, he's, or, or, or let's say an Excel uh, data sheet, in all probability, he is also the one using that tool to help him calculate something. Same thing with Word. Now with Access, it's quite different because Access is basically not a normal application. It is basically more a developer tool. And it, with Access, you have basically two types of people using Access. One of them is the user himself. I'm just gonna place him here. And that user is not somebody who is familiar with Access. Let's say I have uh, a travel agency. And I employ a couple of guys in my travel agency. Now, those guys, those people, are users. They are they they not, they're they're experts on travel and booking trips and stuff like that for my clients. But you know, they're not like access specialists. They have no idea what access is. All they know is how to book a trip, how to you know uh, sell it to the client, how to organize stuff. Uh, regarding travel and so on and these guys those users are limited are using my access database however they're limited to the forms they just go to a form click some buttons input some data and that's it they don't know anything about queries or forms or tables and they don't care all they want to have is a database system which works which when the button when you click on a button something the right thing happens and so on. So they don't care about the internals of the database. And that's why their work is limited to the forms. They are not allowed and they cannot access 
the inner workings of the database, like the queries and the tables. They cannot change anything in there. All they can do is input data, delete data, move data, and so on. But everything what they do is limited to the forms. A developer, on the other hand, let's say me, I develop that database for my people. He obviously has access to the forms, but he has access to all elements of the database. He can change the database and modify that and so on, whereas the user cannot modify a lot of stuff. And this is a very important concept to remember because when we start building our databases, you're going to see that we're going to have to make some decisions because the, the reason for, for having to make certain decisions is because the user will not be able to do any changes once we have set certain parameters. Once we have said, let's, let's say, this certain thing has to be of that size, the user cannot change it. So if, the, if that size is, is too small, the user is going to have a problem. And what you don't want to have is uh, having to go back to the developer and telling him, oh, you've got to modify that, you've got to correct that, because that is always expensive in terms of time or money, depending on who the developer is. And this is the difference between Access in Excel and Word. With programs like Excel and Word, it's very easy to do a change. They are designed to be built and used by the same person. Whereas in Access, it's a quite different story. It is designed to be developed by somebody and used by somebody completely else. And this user is not supposed to know anything about Access. So basically with Access, you are basically on the threshold between a user and a developer. And you're actually, if you are developing databases, you are actually on your first step towards becoming a software developer. Okay? So that's, that's, that's the thing about forms. They're basically like, if we, if we go back to our body analogy, it's, they're basically like the skin. They're the outside. They may, you know, I mean... The skin makes you look good or not good. You know that that skin is the outside of your body, and the same thing is here with uh, with forms. They are the external part of your database. That's what people see. Same thing with your skin. That's all what people see or actually want to see. You know, right? Now, uh, there's another similar the, the 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 fourth item, which is quite similar to forms. Yet a bit different, and that is reports. Because it's, kind of, it's a sort of a, a second form of skin, if you wish. And the only difference is the following: forms are designed to be user friendly for the screen. Yeah, if I go back to our access database, you see here I can include buttons and so on in my forms. They are designed to look good on the screen. Here's another form. You can see here I can see each ink on its own. I don't have a table. I just see each company on its own. And remember, I can always add here buttons, logos, and stuff like that, which I can't do in tables or query uh, or queries. Yeah. And forms are for the screen, for a computer screen. Now, reports are basically exactly the same thing as a form. They're also a template. They also draw their data from the tables. However, they are designed to look good on paper. And if I open one report here, let's say contacts, there that is a great looking report ready to be printed or, you know, uh, 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 created as a PDF. But reports obviously do not allow you to have any buttons because, you know, reports are designed to be printed. So they're basically another user interface, uh, interface, albeit one designed for paper or for PDFs. Okay. So going back to the to the sketch we got in Access we have two uh, two types of user interfaces forms and and reports they're basically in principle the same uh, creating one is pretty much identical to creating the other except with forms you have more um, possibilities buttons and stuff like that whereas with the reports you know you just got to make sure it, it looks good on an A4 uh, paper and um, uh, but both of them are user interface. So both of them, both reports and forms, are, are just different kinds of um, skin to your database. So basically, now we can see the four different components 
uh, four physical components of a database, tables, queries, forms, and reports. And, and to repeat, like uh, tables are the bones, queries are like the muscles, and the forms and reports are basically the user interface, the skin of your database. Right. And now we come to the fifth component of uh, a database, and that is, uh, I'm just going to call it automation. And basically, automation So automation is basically um, that thing which gives your database that extra punch. So for instance, automation is if I click on a button, that stuff that happens after clicking on that button, that is part of automation. I have, as a developer, I have to uh, uh, fix that and, and tell Access, oh, you know what, when this guy presses on print, please print that report. Or when that guy said, uh, clicks on the button close, please close that form and so on so that's that's automation and you and you have to build as a developer you have to create all that automation which we will do in this series and under automation in access we have two different parts one is macros and macros are basically uh, where you create certain types of automation like let's say like printing closing opening stuff and so on but you don't have to need you don't need any programming knowledge what you do is just build your automation process via building blocks there are certain building blocks which you use and and you can just combine these like it's like lego you combine these building blocks into a complete process which then takes place once the once something is triggered either a, 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 a user presses a button or something happens with the database and then which triggers then a certain process. So basically with macros, you build the process based on a certain building available building blocks. You don't, you don't need any programming knowledge with that. And the second type of automation is with VBA. Now VBA is called Visual Basic for Applications. And it's sort of the same language used in Excel to automate Excel. Uh, so basically, if you know it from Excel, you you look pretty good in Access because it's basically the same language. And with VBA, you can cut, you can uh, you definitely need to know how to program in VBA. And here you can obviously develop much more complex automation processes than with macros. And going back to our uh, body analogy so basically automation is basically like the brains of the whole the whole um, database those tables queries forms and reports they, they represent the physical uh, body whereas the automation processes whether you do them in VBA or in as macros they represent the brain of your database application and that is basically, or those are basically the types of components you have in each um, database application. So that's now enough of access theory. In the next video, we're going to be building our first access database.